This pile of stuff is all yours. All Thank you. All yours, okay? Oh my Thank God. you. So, of course, when you're here. That is so cool. Thank you so much for doing that. When you're out and about in my yard, mm -hmm. we're all about safety here. So, mm -hmm. we got to wear high vis. Right. We got to wear this. Use a whole bunch of stuff, and this right here is a nice little bag. <laughs> there you there go, go, buddy. All right. And here, shortly, as you can see, the guys are all coming in and doing their stuff. You do this every Thursday? Every Thursday, we have the safety meeting. Uh, we are we are OSHA compliant, so every Thursday, we keep up with the required training. Oh, okay. um, like this week's topic is first aid. Okay, they, uh, they have other topics for like fire safety. Um, you know, geez, I'm trying to remember all of them. Lock out, tag out, things like that. It's okay. just different things for different styles of trucks and stuff. But to be OSHA compliant, we have to have that required training all year round. Oh wow! Okay. So once a week, we go through the required training. It is what it is. But, uh, then we add in our own little spice too. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a couple extra added things and stuff. But you remember that I tell you when I was out on the route that I was just helping out. Um, yeah, you were the, yeah, yeah, you're the operations manager. I'm the, I'm the manager for the portables uh, division. So I control all of like the port bodies and things like that. Okay. So awesome. as you can see, that's my schedule. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was wondering about it. Yeah, yeah, that's how my that schedule. Works. Yeah. So this shows just special events going on, things like that, such as oh, right. right now this purple. This is the state fair. Oh. Our division right now in New Berlin is working the state fair. Okay. Um, with the little reds meeting, the guys' vacations, things like that. Yeah. Race day event to Madison. Madison Mini. Bree Stevens has a concert. So, so cool. Yep. Yeah. And then what I try to do is weekly try to figure out what we're doing every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. So, try, just try to keep organized. That's all. You guys are seven days a week then. Somebody's doing something, huh? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do because of the, you know, the time of the year and stuff like that. And then also just starting a Labor Day weekend, we actually, one of our large counts is the Badgers. We do Badger games. Oh, neat. Yeah. So we're out there every Badger game. Out of curiosity, what, curiosity, why do you have royal dumpsters? Royal like was the, the original, Roblox, I guess. The, that was the original company oh, that oh, we was? purchased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh, you and bought them out? That's what I'm wondering. Portables, or it went to Badgerland. Oh, and so it was originally a Royal and then became Badgerland. And then uh, LRS purchased Badgerland. So that's how they... That's why the bins in Westport say that instead of LRS. Yep, yep. So they're a little bit older. Is it LRS National? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And they're uh, ranked, I do believe, the fifth largest in the nation right now. That's what I've seen. Yeah. And we're ranked, we're, we mainly cover in the United States, we're mainly like uh, upper Midwest, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, yeah. Illinois is our main area, oh. uh, yeah. Michigan, Indiana. Uh, we were out in Tennessee and Nashville, but we purchased that, but then we sold it back. So, uh, you guys, we're in Iowa, where else? Where else do we got? Um, I don't really know. I know you guys want a contract in Northbrook, Illinois. Yep, yep. Um, actually, those contracts, like around here too, uh, residential contracts, things like that. So, yeah, we get those I... contracts because he had done some recording in our neighborhood. That was it the day before or that mm -hmm. morning. And this thing did something weird with it, so it didn't actually record. No. And it's because so. of that, he he went to his grandma's house, and that's where he met you. So he would have never met you at his, and he not screwed up his. <laughs> that's yeah. okay. That's the video okay. Game. It's fun. It's fun, and it's good mm -hmm. to know that uh, you know I've got we've got the youth that's interesting. Yeah. You know, and I'm very glad that you put that out there, so so that actually people see what garbage people do, because not many people know mm -hmm. what we do. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of like the gremlins at night. Mm -hmm. just pick up the garbage during the day, and it's done. Right. Yeah. So we like to. We don't mind this. Oh, really? Well, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go All right. So we should go ahead and get started, guys. All right, good morning. As I've uh, explained to you guys, 
over uh, last week. Let you guys know we have uh, a guest. This guest, his name is Adi. Hi. And his father, Ben. Hi. Adi was the gentleman that was uh, very interested in what I was doing out there that one day in found him in the house. So he came by and wanted to observe. I was doing our safety and stuff like that. And then also going out and checking out and seeing our trucks. Okay. Um, Adi is very interested. And as you can see, he is taping right now. I do look. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, he is, he's just putting this out there and showing interest in the garbage company or garbage route. Okay. So welcome them aboard. I would say that he is an employee of the day. Okay. okay. So, uh, let's go on to our topics that we have on there. Uh, the first topic I'm going to go over is goal. It stands for get out and look. When you pull up to a place and you're in doubt, get out and look. Right? We've been talking about it uh, over and over again. Uh, don't get complacent on your stops. You might have realized, yeah, I've been there before, but that tree branch might have lowered just from weather, windy days, things like that. I'm going to say it and I'm going to regret saying it, you know, with our weather, it's so crazy here in the Midwest. Uh, we even get like the ice and stuff like that, and, you know, the wires, it's going to stretch the wires. You don't know if the wire was stretched or not, if we had ice at the beginning of the week and you're picking up at the end of the week. Just watch your wires, watch your overheads, uh, eads, everything. Uh, spacing, get out and look. If you're in doubt, get out. Okay? Don't think that you are number one, okay? Because it'll get you. Yes, we're always number two. <laughs> All right, next topic, first aid. <coughs> first aid, uh, it's a very general, very wide topic. Um, a lot of first aid that we do here is, you know, you might touch your hand, uh, finger, things like that. Anything major, what are you doing? Oh, call 911. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything major, you're calling me in. Um, trucks have first aid kits. If you are missing your first aid kit, let me know. We can get you a first aid kit and put it back in the truck. Okay. But uh, we are uh, OSHA compliant, so the trucks have to have the first aid kit in there. They have the general stuff band aids, ointments, burn creams, things like that. It's not made for a major ordeal. Um, broken bones, things like that, just your calling immediately and letting us know, right? Uh, is anyone here certified in first aid? First aid also includes the uh, CPR and ADD. Well, like the electronic defibrillator. Yeah, yeah, it's all <laughs> part of it. Yeah, yeah, it too. yeah, so it was all, yeah, it's probably expired, so. Uh, but to be honest with you, you know, with that first aid class, what did you learn? General response. Not, you're not doctors out there, but uh, good Samaritan laws out there, of course, will protect you if you're out there trying to help people. First thing you're doing is getting help from calling 911 if you're in a major thing, okay? Any questions, guys, in the first aid? Okay. Our employee of the day, We'll be out there following along with you guys. As you can tell, he's got his high design. So uh, going out to the yard, he might stop you guys, ask you guys a couple questions. Feel free to answer, okay? He is very interested and wants to know everything that you guys do. So like I said, he is recording. <laughs> so, Are you uh, camera shy, Tom? <laughs> no, not at all, as you can tell. It does not bother me. So uh, like I said, Welcome him aboard, and uh, you guys be careful and be safe. Okay. Now the guys go out after they've gotten all their paperwork. They've got their routes, they've got their stops, they've got their tablets. They go out and they pre trip their, pre -trip their trucks. Which we're going to walk with. I'll give you the tour. This is our shop area. Okay. Um, as you can tell, what's the second there? Uh, our bay, we can hold three in here. That's the one you were driving. It was. <laughs> this one is down. Uh, it's having a problem with a, uh, the ram. The ram for the Corrado. Oh, yeah. It's not 
letting the truck know that it's out. That the sensor inside the road. This is one of my trucks. This is the portables truck. Okay. In this tank, the front half of this tank, or right up to that seam, is water. From that seam back is waste. Okay? okay. So that's how they can haul water and waste at the same time. Those big circular guys right there? Yeah. What are those? Um, I don't have uh, wheels, maybe? Those are the brakes. Oh, uh, they are? Those are the drum brakes. All of your big trucks, they all work, they still work off the drum, drum brakes. Okay. They're still the best because of, they're all air powered. So when you pull the air, they spring out. That's how. Oh, that's why you hear that. That's why you that hear that in the springs that they pop. That squeezes them, and that's how the drum brakes. Oh, out of curiosity, most wheels on trucks that I've seen are like white or silver. Why are your guys in black wheels? It depends. It depends on the rims that they get okay. at the time. Come on through here. You're looking at these, right? Yeah. So some of them are black, some of them are white, but they're so dirty. This is chrome. They just get dirty and dusty. Oh. So, yeah, they come in different colors. The chrome ones, of course, are more expensive. You know, they, people, you know, they get all giddy about that. In here is, of course, my portable section. Mm -hmm. We keep our portable trucks inside. We have to. They can't get below 20 degrees, oh. they freeze. Sure. And you don't want frozen. <laughs> so we're gonna go on around here and go on out. What is Crystal clean oil fillers. What is that? That's just uh, garbage. That's the old oil filters that you get. We could throw them away. Crystal clean comes and grabs them and throws them away for us. Oh. Because you can't dispose of those in the landfill. Here's our yard. We have four commercial trucks that started out earlier this morning they were parked here mm -hmm. okay is that an older truck it looks like one of the i don't or forgot what type of map that is i think it's yeah. an le yeah that is an le and that is older mm -hmm. but if you'll notice a lot of my fleet doesn't look too old right yeah it lrs is fine. a younger company mm -hmm. you probably won't find a truck in here that's under or over eight years old okay and you're asking about the royal yeah. It's because the stickering and finding all the containers out there, kind of hard to do. There's so many out there, it's just... You just do you just use them? I'm sorry? They just You just use the royal ones and yeah, just kind of deal them, with Yeah, we use them and then, it? you know, when they come in, we might paint them, we might repair them, such as like these holes and stuff. Mm -hmm. we might repair them once they're repaired and painted, get a new sticker, but it takes a while. Yeah. And as you can tell, quite a while, right? And remember, I was telling you that most of our trucks are 10 years old or whatnot. All the rest of them have been around 10 years. So that's how. Why do you guys drive on like the the left side? Most people will drive on the right side, but you guys in the Corrados drive on the left. Because actually, you uh, a lot of regulations. You can't drive on the right side. Kind of hard because what, what happened is we just added this last week. The gentleman fell out of the truck. Oh my god, how did that happen? He took a turn too fast and he's on the right side. He took a left hand turn and he lost his footing inside the truck. Oh my god. Still in motion. He is actually doing much better than he did. So, how did I not even see this? That's why we discourage that right side driving as much as possible because it's dangerous and they got to stand up. That's why. You see some of the other trucks out there where they're sitting down and on the right side? Yeah, they do, but we've there's been so many injuries and whatnot, we kind of stay away from that. This gentleman here, I want you to introduce you to him. Okay. This gentleman is a residential driver. Top notch. This is the 
guy that runs and owns DeForest, DeForest Trash. This is my DeForest Trash driver. He is like number one guy, you know, and DeForest loves him. So, yes, whenever we get calls, they're like, how's Keith doing? Well, he's on vacation. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, they know him by name, so, which is kind of nice. Because what's, what's going on out there during the day is your residential drivers out there all day, right? Yeah. If there's something going on in the community, what happens? They're calling us and saying, did you see this? You know what? I might have seen that car driving around. You know, so we're, we're out there right along with everybody else. I also have a few questions for you. Sure, no problem. No problem. Let me just see. So how do you... From cams, trucks, and planes, how do you unload your trucks and where do you do it? We have to take it to a landfill that's about five hours on the road. Uh, we take it to a facility where you just, it's a big open field, it's on a hill. Um, take the truck out, this bug will come out, just so you can see there. Comes out, open the tailgate up, make sure no one's behind you, and back up to the surf area. Push the trash out with their truck, and just bump the center, and push the whole load out. It's a mess. For you. Oh, cool. Because you, you've never seen that part. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. So he's going to pull forward with the tailgate so you can see what's inside. So he has to take the bucket out to dump because the blade is, is up front, right? So what he's going to do is he's going to open up that back door. Does the Corrado have bigger arm? Like the bigger. Arms it's got there. bigger rubber pads. Yeah. Hey, Sean. Sean. He's looking at something. I just want to let you know he's looking at Yeah. Oh. Hello. Right there, okay? Yeah. Yeah. All these rubber pads are right now. Okay. okay. All these rubber pads are right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
has like holiday weeks, like um, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I, do, I have one question. Sure. When you're controlling that arm all day, does your like, uh, does your like hand hurt after? Oh no, no, no. I'm so day? used to it. It's all in the wrist action. It's all right here in your fingers and hands. So but you gotta be careful because when you're going on a route, you're picking up heavy things like a pouch, a magic box ring. Uh, we pick up those too. Those are going to the truck. Those are going to a separate area. The refrigerators and. Generally, 
I've been doing it for years. It's just the thing we do. We leave the can lid like this. A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't. Yeah, I like it. But I look at this way. It like a it. garbage can. If it rains, it rinses out. So, so they I mean, like to leave it up. I mean, sometimes it's not open, sometimes it is. I mean, yes, it depends on the can. Some people, some people will leave the lid open for whatever reason and then it won't. Well, some people will leave the lid open for whatever reason and then it'll close when you dump yep. it. Yes. Logic. So I usually know where I go on my route. I can actually, um, I, I got a pen. Also, when we have people helping out on the route, sometimes in the old days, what I used to do is flip the lids because then they would know where I was if they're coming out to help me. Now we all follow maps and stuff. And customers don't like the open lids. So you can control that. I, I would see them I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. and grab it out yeah. if we can. Yeah, it'd be safe out there too because sometimes when traffic, traffic is really, really bad on a main road, like say on a highway, like Highway V up in the forest or Main Street, which is heavily traveled. You gotta be careful if you have our mirrors and you wear high visibility, which is worse than people can see. I drive my bright lights on all the time. So people always say, I, have, I, I didn't see you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> How could you not see that? Well, I hear it all the time.
saw the pythons are they, they are horrible. Yeah, horrible. that's what you told me. Like, yeah, mechanically they're just a pet. They if I were to tell my mechanic we're getting a, a <laughs> python, he'll scream and yell and throw it out the window. <laughs> it's it's that bad. So that makes sense. So now he's just gonna go and put his truck in park it. This one here, it's the same movement backwards. He just backs up, puts it with the hook, and pulls it up on the now, what's nice about a book with the roll-off is they don't have to be completely lined up. They can be kind of a little bit off. When they're pulling it up on the hook, they can pop it up on the rails. The rail is the metal bar system. Now, all he has to do is pretty much flip a switch, and this hook will only go back and sort of off, and then when it lifts, it keeps it up in the air, and then that's how they dump it up the back. Uh, his truck is being serviced for today, and he has to be in a spare truck. A good contract, like we do with Matt. We can all, you know, go get parts real fast, everything's easier. They might have a company contract for Diamond or International. Well, actually, they have, they have a lot of cabs, actually. I've seen a Mac, a Freightliner, and a Peterbilt, but I, I don't think I've seen it. My portables division, I have a contract with Satellite. Satellite is the company that makes all this stuff for portables, but they don't make the trucks. But they make the tanks and everything like that. So the company buys a truck and just a frame and sends it up there. Then they do all the work and put it together. So yeah, a lot of the portable trucks, if we find a Dodge dealership that has them on sale, we grab them. And then they go up there and get gas. That's how it works. When you are being a driver, what is the coolest truck you've driven? And that question is from who? Waste Management Films. When I was a driver, my coolest truck that I drove was the One Pass. What was that? The One Pass was a residential truck that you collected garbage and recycle all together. Oh, so it was like a split body? It was a. It was worse. <laughs> what? The the body. The bottom part of the body was trash, the top part was recycled, and the recycle was split in two to three separate sections. Oh. That was in the olden days before a, they did single screen. Was it a manual? Yeah, uh, no, it was an automatic. Oh, really? But that one there, when it was dumping, it was so high and it was so heavy, it would do this. It would wobble. Oh. And it was wobbling up in the That's air. The that's what the Freightliner Labrie does. It just kind of like when it hits the bin, it's like yeah, it wobbles a lot. Yeah, we so, don't we don't prefer that. We like to be stable. Mm -hmm. And what do you do to your trucks before you leave? The what do we do? We have to do a pre-trip inspection that's required by DOT. Mm -hmm. All of these drivers hold CDLs in their pockets mm -hmm. because of the weight of the truck. They are all CDL drivers, and yeah. part of CDL training is learning how to do a post-trip. Okay. And have you ever worked for a different company? Before? I have. What I've actually worked Which for one? multiple companies. I worked for Waste Management. Oh, you did? I worked for Advanced Disposal. I worked for GFL and I worked for LRS. Oh, that's a lot of companies. Didn't It was because of my just my experience. What happened with GFL and Advanced? Are they related at all? Because I know Waste Management GFL products. came in and purchased Advanced Disposal. And then, but during that time... And then Waste Management got it from them? Well, it was kind of a legalities thing. GFL couldn't purchase Advanced because it was, then they would become too big of a company. It's a government thing. So they had to share it with Waste Management. But Waste Management is already huge. Waste management is already huge, but does that tell you GFL was huge because it came from Canada? They oh. have so much up there. So, oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that's that's all from weight from WM Films. And then the next question is from LH. What truck is going to get scrapped next? What or, truck is going to get scrapped next? Yeah. I would These recommend. These questions aren't for me yet, by the way. That one right there, the 4505. That 4505? Yeah. Okay. That's just old. But uh, sure. that one there is probably one of the hardiest ones. It works the best. From Iceman Cometh. I don't know if these are real questions or not, but what do you do to paint? What do I do with, with paint? Like, what do you do with paint? Like, paint. Um, do you just. The customers 
when they're removing paint from their homes, if they have a five, like a little gallon container, mm -hmm. it has to be empty, cap has to be off, and cat litter has to be put inside it. If not, our driver will not grab it. What if, can, There's can you, like, specialty places that they can take it to. Can you like dry it out and make it like a big paint brick? You can, but you still have to put cat litter in it. Okay. That guarantees us that it is dry. And what do you take to recycle, I guess? What do we take to recycle? Yeah. Just about anything. Believe it or not, everything is recyclable right now. Pretty oh. close. Except for styrofoam, plastic bags. That's what I've been telling everybody, but everybody thinks that plastic bags are recyclable. No, they are not. They I actually know. tear up our systems. They get caught. And yeah, they, that's what they, I've been saying. Yeah, they're, I'm going to show them this video. Yes. <laughs> plastic <laughs> bags are big. No, no. No plastic bags. Okay. We do not like them. So let's <laughs> see. What else? What is the weirdest thing you've seen while collecting from from Peter McLean? How about the weirdest thing I did when I was collecting? Yeah. When I went and grabbed a container and grabbed it to dump it into the bucket uh -huh. and a squirrel ran out, ran down my arm, <laughs> up and jumped off my head. Oh, okay. Squealed like a girl and that was it. That was my my funniest thing. So yes. I, I've had some rough Yesterday ones. I was at the my grandma's house, same place that I was chasing you that day, and I opened her recycle bin to dump some stuff in there. Yep. And I saw a fat frog inside of the bin. I don't know how that happened. Have it's you ever seen a dumpster bandit? Uh no. You have it? The raccoons. Oh. We call them dumpster bandits. Oh, well, I don't think I've seen a raccoon either. <laughs> yeah, they, they get into dumpsters and they get stuck. The best way to get a raccoon out of a dumpster, take a piece of wood and st slide it in there like a ramp. and walk away. They'll they'll walk out the ramp. Yep. How long have you been working for LRS? <laughs> for LRS, uh, I'm going on four years. Four years. <laughs> and these are all... Or, okay, do you enjoy driving? I do. I do. I enjoy driving more than I enjoy being a manager. And as most of my employees know that I love being a manager. So. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So he was just taking them off and he's going to use them. With this truck, you see how this one has a tank and system like this? It's all up on here. This is a different style of truck that's known for P&D, which is pickup and deliveries. This truck, the holding tank, is here. Oh. It's this, okay? So, right here, this line, back is water, from here forward is the waste. These little bubbles tell you how much garbage he's got in there, okay? So it'll tell you, uh, hey, you're getting pretty full when this one's full. When this is about half, he can't get any more in there, okay? So it's a thousand gallon capacity. That's 750 waste and 250 water, okay? In the winter time, what happens to poop in the winter time? It freezes. I have large water tanks that we mix salt off line and we send it up there and this is all gravity fed into the truck. That's how we can keep working 365 days of the year. Anything lower than 20 degrees, we're dead in the water. We can't do anything except for uh, ethanol. We can use it but we don't prefer to. It's not, it's very combustible and we don't want exploding toilets. That's not pretty. My last couple questions is, what made you decide to start working for LRS? Well, that's a story I'm going to tell you inside my office. Okay. <laughs> because what got me here was good friendships. Okay. So the 6 o'clock guys were all of the portable guys, and maybe one or two resi guys. Okay. But the 5.30 was the big clump of the guys that come in. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Thank you so much. That was an awesome 
No, 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 no absolutely a trans tour. So, so you were asking how I became LRS, huh? Or why you wanted to work for them. Back when LRS was royal and they, uh, the company called Badger Land took mm -hmm. over and bought them out, the owner of Badger Land gave me a call because mm -hmm. I was friends with this gentleman and I wor we worked together in waste management. And he asked me if I would come and help him take care of the business lines of business in this location. Mm -hmm. That's why. I, when I was at waste management, I worked for the portables division at waste management also. So waste he knew I had the has experience. Yeah, waste management had it. They don't know. They no longer have it. They, I think they got rid of it about five years ago. So, oh, that's why I've never yeah. seen it. They do run it out of the Illinois area, but they don't up here in Wisconsin. And let's see. What is your opinion? Well, first of all, do you have any like competitor companies? Companies that are competitors with LRS? I think you can answer that. One. <laughs> Waste management question That's mark? one. GFL. GFL. Pelletary. Really? Bucky's. Pelletary is so small. I don't think they're still a competitor. They are? Uh-huh. Oh wow. <laughs> what is your opinion on the biggest competitor to LRS? Uh, my biggest competitor on LRS, probably at this location, is Pelletary. I don't have really? much of an opinion with them due to the fact is that we're mainly a lot of roll-off out of this location. And Pelletary does a lot of the roll-off. So. Uh, but uh, my opinion with waste management, uh, it, it, you can get lost in a big corporation. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, there's two more questions left. So what was up with that DFE problem? or? I don't remember. Was the it death problem? Yeah. It was all solved. What it was was a little small sensor. Yeah, I saw you solved it eventually. And yep. I was like, oh, wait, he solved, he fixed it. Okay, I better go. What I did was I video. reset the truck. I had to actually shut it down, turn off the battery, disconnect. Everything had to mm -hmm. shut down for a good five, ten minutes. Resets the truck. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the mechanic was still on the way just in case if it was a major ordeal. Do you know what death does? Um... I don't, I know it stands for diesel fuel admission, but I don't know what it does. It's actually, it's diesel exhaust fluid. Oh. DEF. I thought and you said diesel fuel admission. Uh, DEF. D-E-F. Diesel oh. exhaust fluid. Oh. And what that does is actually cleans out the, the system for emissions. So California actually started it and it's gone nationwide. And what it is, is it's this particular fluid. It's almost like pure alcohol. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the truck runs at a certain temperature and it pushes that fluid into, let's say, the uh, actually what that fluid is, is like pure alcohol. And when it gets ignited and goes into the air filter systems, it burns off all of the carcinogens inside mm -hmm. the filters. So what happens is when it's executing the air and whatnot, it's cleaner air. Uh, so it's 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 for your exhaust for your cleaning air system. Now sometimes the diesel exhaust fluid, usually for residential trucks, they're just bouncing from house to house. They're mm -hmm. not really revving that engine up too high. You have to rev the engine up at least certain RPMs to get it hot, to get it cooked off, or it'll automatically go into a shutdown mode and do it itself. Then you got to sit there and wait for about a half hour. Mm -hmm. No. Which you noticed. So that's what happens. And then the last question from Burtek Dude Master is how are the garbage trucks made? Do you know that? How are they made? Yes. Yeah, like I any do. other truck that's made or a vehicle that's made in a factory, but uh, I would recommend, you know, if he ever wanted to look up that one, he'd probably go to a better site because yeah. there's so many different styles, different things, different. There's. They probably just have all the different components and one company puts them all together. Where do you buy your trucks from? Like Premier or? It depends. Depends on who's got the best do deal at the buy best them time. Right from Heil? Or? Uh, we do Heil. We, uh, well, what's the other companies out there? Uh, Heil's the main one that we go with, but the Heil is just the body. It's not the frame mm -hmm. and yeah. not the truck. So it depends. It depends. Uh, we, wherever they're cheapest at the time too. I think right now we're not very picky. And right now we're on a buying freeze. You know, we're just dealing with what we've got, which is great. 
because uh, you know, overabundance, you don't want that too much inventory sitting around. But we actually have to, you have to have a spare ratio. So you have to have at least one or two trucks just in case. As I'm you saw this from that other video to my manager, and he really loved it. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, so yes, I've seen the videos. I'm back. I think I still have it in my phone it's for your texting. I've got, mm -hmm. you, I've got you in there. So be more than great to have you as a great communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you let me know how things are going. And, and please send me any information that you guys are doing, any responses. Keep me updated. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I edit this video, I can send it to you. And then if anybody has any extra questions that they didn't have time to ask, I can text them to you and you I'll, sure I'll tell them. You know what? Email is a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Um, texting because I can't text and drive. True. So, yeah. Email it and I'll get right back to you as soon as I can. All but, right. Yeah, as Sounds you notice good. with the texting, it takes me a little while. <laughs> I'm kind of helping out in trucks and stuff. But please, stay in contact. Thank you. Thank you.